Hey, what's up guys? As a follow-up from uh, one of my recent videos where we talked about moving on from the KLR, this is what I went with. So I found the bike for me. This is a 2009 DR650. Shoutouts to Some for Sip, Summer and Sebastian. Check out their channel if you're interested. But uh, they do a lot of off-road content and they've been big into DR DRs for, uh, for a long time. This is a 2009... Um, yeah, <laughs> what can I say? Uh, the bike is is not in as good a condition as my 08 uh, KLR 650. This KLR has been kept pristine. I've taken such good care, but this bike has been stored for the last two years, and uh, we've got a few issues to work through. But uh, let's just take a run over of the bike. So first off, cosmetically, the bike is just not quite as good. We've just got a few more scratches and a few things to work through. You see we have some like broken up stickers and things like that that annoy me. We have a busted up handguard over here. So handguard will need to be replaced. I might replace both, I'm not sure. Front tire is great, but that back tire is gone. So we'll definitely have to be replacing that. Looks like we have a broken tail light here somehow. I'm not sure how it's broken. I haven't stripped it down yet, but uh, but it's broken. This bike also has quite a few like frame tubing scratches. So you see everything is all scratched up there and a little bit rusty and the frame down here I'm guessing from someone wearing uh, like a motocross boots are, are torn up a little bit. So, bike needs some TLC. It's been stored for uh, for two years, like I said. It's only got 15,000 kilometers on it, which for these big single cylinder engines is nothing, but it needs some TLC. Um, yeah, it's running a little bit rough. I think the carbs are, are dirty because it keeps kind of checking in and out. But, overall, what we have here is a really great bike. Really great bike. In the style that I want, you can just tell the overall mass difference in changing over from the KLR. It's, uh, it's definitely more of a dirt bike, but we have some work to do. Okay, I haven't been the best YouTuber so far today. Um, I went ahead, just because I was curious, and picked apart that light assembly to see what was going on there. Now, if you remember, this was all taped up here. And I figured it was all broken out, like the clips inside or something. It turns out, after taking all the assembly apart inside, the bracket that it bring, draws these two faces together was bent, was, which was creating a, a huge gap here, probably about 3 16 of a gap on the top of the lens. So instead of fixing it or looking how to fix it, the guy just done it all around with black duct tape. Quality fix, but we've got it all cleared up. I think I'm going to change out this tail light. In the future we'll talk about that, but for now, at least it looks good, and it's all cleaned up. Now if you remember down here, we had this huge assembly. Don't bother looking up this plate number, because it's not my plate, it's from the previous owner. I'll be switching that out. But, this big huge outfit mounts down here, and I plan to remove that. So all I need to do is make up a new uh, a new plate bracket, which will be real easy. We'll do that in the future. But I think the back of the bike looks a lot better without it, and you don't have that big, huge plastic shroud hanging down there. What do you guys think? Was that a was that a good decision to remove that or not? So next thing I'm going to do is just start pulling a few of the panels and the seat and stuff off this bike. See how dirty it is inside. Uh, we'll be able to. Uh, get an idea of where the battery is then for future reference. We'll also be able to check out the air filter, the breeder box, see how dirty things are, give it a clean, see if the filter needs to be replaced. Also something I want to do, the side panels on this bike has all mix matched nuts and bolts. So the previous owner I guess in working on it or whatever lost different bolts and he just placed whatever he had in there which drives me crazy. I, I would never be able to deal with that. Plus here now I'll need a uh, different wrench or a different socket. Like this one here is a screw head. This one here is a bolt. Over on the other side we have uh, we have another different size bolt. So we need three different tools just to take these panels off. So we'll replace them with something a little better. A 
let me say once again how awesome these impact drivers are. Man, oh man. So here is the filter. You can see it's a little bit dirty, a little bit scummy. I'm going to give it a bit of a cleaning. See if we can clean it up here and uh, and get it back on the bike. I think I might do a bit of airbox uh, modding, switch out the filter to a K and N like a fin cell filter. But for now, cleaning this up will uh, will get us up and running. I don't think this has been cleaned for a while. So first things first, I'm just cleaning out this airbox here now, and it is horrendous. This is the worst airbox I've ever seen. I always keep the airbox nice and clean on my bikes, even though I know you have the filter there, but still, the less you have that can be bouncing around mixing with the air. We've got a sixteenth of an inch uh, of muck in here, but there's enough dirt in there that you can s scoop it off with your uh, with your fingers. This right here is the kind of sludge I was talking about, the thickness of it. That's all throughout the air box there. So we've got uh, a lot of muck taken out of there. So once we get a filter, clean filter on there, it should really improve its breathing. But you've got to figure that with how dirty the filter is, how dirty the air box is, the carburetor is probably pretty dirty as well. So. Gonna, that's a bit more involved of a project, but we're gonna have to get that carburetor off and clean it up. Get a bucket of scalding hot water here with uh, with lots of soap, lots of detergent in there. So hopefully we can get some of the dirt out of this filter, dry it out. Now while that filter is drying, I'm going to go ahead and change the oil. I have no idea what the oil is going to look like. Maybe it was changed just before it was stored. Judging by the condition of the bike, I highly doubt it. I did run the bike a little bit, so it's uh, nice and warm. Ooh, that is some black oil. black gray swirls about how I figured it I couldn't see oil level on the uh, on the fill glass here the sight glass um, and I think that's because there's way too much oil in the bike I just filled up uh, a gallon bucket which is <laughs> not supposed to be there's not supposed to be near that much oil in this bike which would be at least as far as as far as I remember the fill spec it is way more oil than this bike should get which is hard on the engine seals I'm gonna see if the old DeWalt will will break these and it will lovely Guys, don't be the person that, uh, that treats your gear like this. There's no need. Oh, very little money to maintain gear like this. Keep up on your oil changes. Keep your air filters clean. It takes very little money. Not a lot of time. It's nice, easy work. Just put in a little bit of effort. Here's the old filter. Here is... The brand new crispy filter. That is nice.
Now, for the rewarding part, or the part that feels good, we get to dump some fresh oil in there. Castrol 10W40. Let's check out the color of this compared to that black oil. Okay, here we go. We'll get that squeaky clean filter back in there. It's got a little bit of oil on it. So we went ahead, changed the oil, uh, we washed that filter, cleaned the air box. We took apart the front end. I actually went ahead took off that full rear uh, outfit, made a little metal bracket for the license plate. This is much better. We also fixed that tail light. So we are well on our way to putting this bike together. Uh, I took it for a spin after the oil change and the, and the filter cleaning. And it's still, uh, it's just the bottom end isn't there. So, And it idles a little bit rough too. So I need to need to get at those carbs. That's the bottom line. Carbs are going to be dirty. I think I'm going to order a jet kit. So it's probably one of the stock jets in there. So I'm going to order a jet kit. Probably rejet the bike. See if I can get a little more out of it. But we'll see that in future videos. Hit the thumbs up and, or let me know down in the comment section if you're interested in this style of uh, in this style of project. I've got to do it anyways. I figure I might as well film it unless you guys really can't stand it. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you liked the video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. We'll see you in the next video.